speed versus velocity. First of all, the very, very big and most important difference between speed and velocity is the fact that speed is what we call a scalar quantity, which means that it only has a magnitude, no direction. Velocity, on the other hand, is a vector quantity, which means it has both a magnitude and a direction. Now, what confuses people sometimes is that the unit for speed and velocity is both meters per second. That's the SI unit, the standard unit. So if you see five meters per second, you might be confused as to whether they're referring to speed or velocity. Remember, these concepts can be very similar. If they say five meters per second to the right or five meters per second east or something like that, they're probably referring to velocity because velocity has a direction. Five meters per second on its own can be referring to speed. There is a difference between how we calculate speed versus velocity, but for now, just know that speed doesn't need a direction, but velocity does need a direction. The reason I'm mentioning the fact that their unit is the same, and they can sometimes be referring to a very similar or the same thing, is because of the equations of motion. These are two of the equations of motion which we use in grade 10, 11, and in grade 12. Now, a question that can be given to you in grade 10, 11, and 12 could be, calculate the speed of the car after the collision, or calculate the speed of the boy on the bicycle after he has traveled 10 meters. And you might look at the equations of motion and think, how am I going to calculate speed if this is acceleration, this is time, these are velocities? Just remember that velocity and speed are very similar. Velocity just has a direction. So you can absolutely use these equations of motion to calculate speed as well. Your answer will just not have a direction. But let's jump into defining speed, defining velocity, and calculating speed versus velocity. You'll understand the differences better when we approach this with an example. So as we mentioned, speed is a scalar, which means no direction is needed. And the definition for speed is it is the total distance traveled per total time. So average speed is a scalar quantity. And as you can see when looking at the formula, speed is equal to distance distance divided by time. Sometimes we can refer to this as s for speed instead of v over here. The unit is meters per second. It's distance divided by time. The total distance traveled per total time. Velocity on the other hand is a vector quantity. It needs a direction and average velocity is the rate of change of position. Now you should know that rate means divided by time. So the rate of change of position, change of position can be represented by delta x or triangle x, where x means change or change in, and the x means position. So it's how your position changes, how your position changes over time, the rate of change in position. So you can see that the formulas are very, very similar, but there is a very big difference. And that difference is to calculate velocity, you use displacement divided by time. Now remember, displacement is a vector quantity. For speed, you use distance divided by time. You can see the difference. Distance to calculate speed, both distance and speed are scalar quantities. Displacement to calculate velocity. Remember, displacement and velocity, they're both vector quantities. However, as we mentioned already, the unit, as you can see at the bottom of here, the unit for speed and velocity is the same, meters per second. Now, when I say meters per second, that that's the unit for speed and velocity. I don't mean that that's the only unit. It's the SI unit. It's the standard unit. It's the unit that we're going to be working with most of the time and the unit that we'll be converting to most of the time. You'll see it most of the time. But because distance divided by time, because distance can be measured in meters, millimeters, kilometers, miles, your units can be very different. Remember, time can be measured in seconds, hours, and so on. So instead of seeing meters per second as a unit for velocity or speed, we can sometimes see kilometers per hour. And you should be familiar with this unit, for example, when it comes to traveling in a car. We say the car traveled at 180 kilometers per hour. That makes a lot more sense when it comes to vehicles traveling instead of meters per second. 
but you do need to know how to convert between meters per second and kilometers per hour. And as I said, there is or there are more units also for velocity and speed. So just keep an eye out on the different units and know how to convert. So I'm going to show you how to convert between meters per second and kilometers per hour. So if I'm converting between kilometers per hour, remember per means divide. So kilometers per hour. One kilometer divided by one hour. That is kilometers per hour. If I want to convert that to meters per second, essentially I need to convert the kilometers to meters. And one kilometer is a thousand meters. And I need to convert the hours to seconds. Now, if you didn't know, one hour is equal to 3,600 seconds. The reason why is because one hour to get it to minutes you times by 60, 60 minutes. And to get it from minutes to seconds, you times it by se by 60 again. So you're timesing by 60 and then you're timesing by another 60. So essentially to get from hours to seconds, you timesing by 60, timesing by 60, or timesing by 3,600. So to convert kilometers per hour to meters per second, you're converting the kilometers to meters by timesing by a thousand. One thousand meters is the same thing as one kilometer. And to get from hours to seconds, you're timesing by 3,600. And one thousand divided by 3,600 is equal to one divided by 3,6. Or that means multiplying by one divided by 3,6 or dividing by 3,6. And what that ultimately means, how you can learn it, is how I've circled it here in blue. To get from kilometers per hour to meters per second, we divide by 3,6. We can use a very, very similar argument to work backwards from meters per second to kilometers per hour. But because we're going the opposite way, we will multiply by 3,6. So what I've circled here in the blue is kind of like a shortcut. To go from kilometers per hour to meters per second, you divide by 3.6. To go the other way, meters per second to kilometers per hour, you multiply by 3.6. There's your summary, there's your shortcut. Now let's do an example of how to calculate speed and how to calculate velocity, and you will very quickly see the difference between these two physical quantities. In this example, we're saying Simon runs five kilometers north along a straight line. He turns around and completes another seven kilometers in the opposite direction. He runs this distance in 2,800 seconds. We want the average speed. We want the average velocity. Let's start with speed. Now, remember, we said that speed is equal to the distance traveled divided by the time taken to travel. So it's distance divided by time. Remember, speed is a scalar, so is distance. It makes sense. They're both scalar quantities. Our answer does not need a direction. Now, distance. If you need help with how to calculate distance versus displacement, check out the links in my bio or the link above. But distance is the total path length traveled. So we've got five kilometers in the one direction, seven kilometers in the other direction. So his distance that he traveled is seven kilometers plus five kilometers. That is 12 kilometers. Now, because our SI unit for speed is meters per second, the, se the time was given in seconds. I'm going to convert my kilometers to meters. We can give our speed in kilometers per second, but it's very unusual to give a unit for speed in kilometers per second. It's generally kilometers per hour or it's meters per second. So they already give my time in seconds, so I'm all good there with the time. It's already in seconds, but I want my distance not in kilometers. I want it in meters. So therefore, I multiply that. One kilometer, you should know, is equal to a thousand meters. So we times it by a thousand, we get 12 thousand meters that's this distance so speed is distance divided by time 12,000 meters divided by the time which is 2,800 seconds and if you look at the units it makes sense we've got meters at the top over here seconds at the bottom meters divided by seconds if I take that seconds to the top we know that this is an exponent of one it becomes meters 
per second like that. That's why there's an exponent of negative one because it's meters divided by seconds. The seconds has a positive exponent of one. When we bring the seconds up to the top, it becomes times, but the exponent becomes negative. Mass rules, exponent rules. 12,000 divided by 2,800. And I get rounded off to two decimal places, 4,29 meters per second. Because we worked out speed, we don't need a direction. The runner's speed is 4,29 meters per second. Let's work out velocity. You will see how this differs. Now, velocity. Different physical quantity. It's a vector. Velocity is change in position over change in time or the rate of change in position. So we need to work out the change in position. This is also known as the displacement. We're going to divide that by the change in time. Now the change in time is the same. The amount of time it took for Simon to run is 2,800 seconds. So we've already got our time. Displacement, on the other hand, is very different to distance. And again, if you need a video that goes over that differences, check out the link in the description. But to calculate the displacement, we need to consider the direction in which he is running. So remember, he's going five kilometers north. So he's going five kilometers this way. That's five kilometers. Then he's turning around and going seven kilometers in the opposite direction. Seven kilometers. And displacement is the change in the position. So it's where he started to where he finished. That is your displacement. Now, how we work that out is as follows. We say he went five kilometers north. Let's take north as our positive direction. So he went five kilometers to the north. And we, then we're going to add his seven kilometers. However, his seven kilometers is south in the opposite direction. So it's five plus minus seven, which means he went negative two kilometers. Remember, the negative means direction. That tells me he went two kilometers in the negative direction, which is two kilometers south. And remember, we want our velocity and our speed, we wanted it in meters per second. So we're going to convert that kilometers to meters. So it's 2,000 meters south. That's his displacement. See how that is very, very, very different from his distance. We use distance to calculate speed, taking it back to the previous question. Distance was you add the five to the seven. It's the total path length traveled, which was 12 kilometers. We converted that to meters, 12,000 meters. Displacement is very, very different. It goes from where you start to where you finish. He started over here over here. He finished over here. The arrow points from where you start to where you finish. That is two kilometers south. There we go. I calculated it using our vector addition. The reason five is positive because I took north as positive. The reason seven is negative is because it's in the opposite direction. Five minus seven is negative two kilometers, which is two kilometers south, which is 2000 meters south. And that is what I put in the place of delta x displacement. So velocity is equal to displacement, which is 2000 meters, divided by time, which is 2800 seconds. And we get 0, 0,71, rounded off to two decimal places, meters per second. And because his displacement was south, there we go, 2,000 meters south. His velocity is also south. You need a direction, otherwise you don't get your answer mark. Remember to put your formula or you don't get the formula mark. Take a look at the links in my description for more mechanics videos, more motion in one dimension, more physics, more chemistry. I can't wait to see you in the next video.